So welcome everybody. So let's go ahead and take a look at our agenda for today. So I do want to start off with a quick product overview for people that are not familiar with InfoWorks. And then we're going to jump in and look at uh, basic concepts of developing your model and then how to take that model into the Autodesk vehicle tracking software to analyze movements. We'll then go back into InfoWorks and start understanding how to add and enhance your model with adding you know, unique details to different types of things. We'll wrap up by going over some of the visualization tools, how to do renders, and how to do uh, animations, things like that. So um, I will, again, try my best to make sure we have enough time to answer any questions that do come up. So I'll, uh, I'll be paying close attention to the clock for you. So first, let's start off by taking a quick look at the product itself for those people that may be somewhat new to InfoWorks. So Autodesk InfoWorks is part of the overall Autodesk BIM for infrastructure solution. Uh, BIM is about creating and using 3D intelligent model for planning, designing, building, and managing infrastructure. In this presentation, we're going to focus on how the transformational technology in InfoWorks 360 help to further deliver on the benefits of BIM. There are three value themes we recognize when we review BIM for infrastructure. Clarity, as in using the intelligent model to gain clear understanding of the project or using it to more clearly communicate project proposals. Continuity, as in having the ability to use the same data for greater consistency across the project life cycle. And agility, which is being able to respond more quickly to changes within processes that are smarter and faster. So what is Autodesk InfoWorks? Well, it's a, it's a breakthrough 3D modeling and visualization technology for desktop, web, and mobile applications that goes beyond traditional AutoCAD and GIS platforms. From more efficiently managing even large-scale infrastructure models, it also helps to accelerate design by engineering early concepts more accurately in the context of what actually exists, and it enables communication to bigger audiences, including public and project stakeholders, in new ways with practically any time, anywhere access to project data. And it also improves team collaboration by sharing models centrally and more securely. So we just got a new release of InfraWorks 360, and um, it's you know technically the 2016 version. It just came out about a week ago. And so it does have uh, all of the key features and functionality of some of its predecessors. So to kind of quickly encapsulate some of the primary functionality of the product, let's just take a quick look at uh, some of the main objectives. So. It gives you the ability to aggregate data. So you can grab whatever information you may have and quickly develop a model of the existing conditions. You can run analysis on that data to better understand your constraints. You have the storyboard functionality to generate animations and proposals. We now have the model builder, which I'll talk about a little bit more, which is a, now a standard feature within the latest version. You have the collaboration with the web uh, applications, and so if you want any, have any types of tablets or anything else that you use in the field, um, you can utilize those as well to access your models. You can also do simulation and a whole lot more. And now again with the latest release, we also have the ability to add on to the vertical applications. So previously, you could export your InfoWorks model data out to other apps, but now you can actually bring your InfoWorks models into vertical applications such as Civil 3D. InfoWorks 360 also contains several additional modules, um, and one of the key ones, is, and we'll be looking at it today, is going to be the Road and Highways module. And this helps civil engineering professionals work on transportation projects, ex explore preliminary design options, and optimize project performance 
by more efficiently engineering roadway engineering, uh, ro I'm sorry, roadway geometry in the context of the existing environment. So use the tools in the road and highways modules to create and edit horizontal and vertical road geometry. Civil engineers can start their designs more accurately in the context of what's real to help reduce the potential for errors because all of the existing environmental information is available within the model. And now with 2016, the ability to take the design from InfoWorks directly into Civil 3D has been enhanced and improved with interoperability between the products. On profiles created using the features within the Road and Highways module in InfoWorks, you can take advantage of the Autodesk InfoWorks 360 road profile optimization capabilities to help calculate the road's optimal vertical path based on parameters you define. So th this is a cloud-based surface which uh, quickly assesses the roadway profile options and uses a combination of the existing terrain data uh, proposed design parameters, design standards, and cost information. Depending upon the project, this capability can save you hours, days, of, you know, tons of, of time uh, by offloading the, comp the computational uh, intensive processes onto a cloud service. So that's a really nice feature as well. Before we get going too far, I did want to take a moment and just give you a, a quick what's new uh, this isn't by far all of the options, but for those people that are somewhat familiar with Inforex, I did want to touch on some of the nice enhancements that we did just recently receive. So first off, um, Model Builder, which was technically a technology preview in previous versions, is now a standard feature, which is really nice. It allows you to quickly uh, assemble a model uh, without having to go out and take the time to collect the various uh, bits of data. So it'll utilize uh, USGS servers, uh, city, county, uh, and statewide uh, servers that are available to you to generate terrain, imagery, uh, GIS road design data, building information, water bodies, things like that. So it's nice to be able to have that uh, available to us. And a few other neat little things they've done to it now is uh, you can now generate models with irregular polygons, uh, and that's kind of nice. Or you can define your area through a shapefile. So that's pretty helpful as well. Some of the usability improvements. Um, you'll notice that uh, in here, and I'm going to jump to it in just a moment, that it, it organizes your models uh, much better. Things are much simpler and easier to get to, whether they're local on your desktop, within your work group, or cloud-based. We've also included the new uh, support for the uh, OBJs and Collada files. And so now you can add animations to your models, which previously they were just stills. And so that's a nice feature as well. And then also another standard feature they've included is the new screencast feature. And this is great for uh, managers, CAD managers, um, anybody who wants to demonstrate functionality or features to their staff or to maybe one of their subs, it generates recordings of you performing certain tasks so that you can share those videos with other people. So the collaboration uh, has been improved quite a bit as well. Now you can store your models on a network drive, which is nice, uh, and, and so that's pretty helpful. Also, you can publish your models with the new web viewer interface, uh, which will also include the scenarios, where previously it was only scenarios. And now we have the Streamline web mobile synchronizing, uh, which generates uh, scenarios pretty quickly. Some of the modeling enhancements, uh, point clouds, they can now uh, be themed, so you can get different visual looks, elevational ranges, height maps, things like that. Uh, to give you a little more character and depth to the point clouds that you're loading up into your file. Um, as I mentioned before, the uh, Collada files are now available for animation, so that's kind of nice. And we have enhanced 
uh, Revit interoperability. So when you bring in your Revit models, now it will support all of your materials and things like that much better. So everything comes over a lot cleaner. Another nice thing that uh, is available is, uh, again, I mentioned this earlier, the ability to take an InfoWorks model and open it in Civil 3D. And previously, again, you had to export that out to an IMX file and then import it, which kind of gave you a static version of it. So now you can actually bring in the InfoWorks model live into Civil 3D, and then you can even make changes in Civil 3D, and then you can go back to your InfoWorks and see those changes updated. Um, on the fly, so not a lot of import-export features that we had to do before. So that's going to be available to you for things like uh, your design roads, uh, intersections, coverage areas, bridges, as well as pipe networks. And then in reverse, kind of in a loop scenario, you can load your Civil 3D drawings now directly into InfoWorks. And again, if you make any changes, uh, they will simultaneously update. So nice features there as well. And that's going to be horizontal and vertical profiles, as well as your corridor modeling, and again, pipe networks and bridge designs. As for the transportation design enhancements, uh, you can now convert GIS roads into design roads, which is nice. Uh, profile grade elements uh, now have locking capabilities, so you can hold certain points as you make changes to others. And then new cut fill uh, geometry data improves the analysis of large roadways, and we'll take a look at a little bit of that as well. The intersection design has improved quite a bit, and I plan on demonstrating this for you today because this is a really nice feature. It gives you much more control over the intersections <clears throat> as they're created based upon uh, turning radius, things like that, uh, as well as vehicle types. And it also uh, controls uh, paint striping, so you'll get little weight paint markers and things like that, uh, which previously didn't really include that information, so that's kind of nice. Also gives you a little more control over the medians and uh, also support for left-handed driving. So let's take a look at developing a new model. So. You can create your models from all different types of data. There's, there's lots of information out there available to you. And InfoWorks will bring in uh, many of the Autodesk uh, resident file types. So you're going to be able to get your AutoCAD, your Civil 3D, Navisworks, Map 3D, Revit, as well as your 3D Max stuff. And so besides that, you're also going to be able to uh, receive all of your uh, data that you've collected on your own. So GIS data, 3D models, 2D models, any kind of raster data, that's all going to be available to you as well. So here's the primary connection types that uh, you can connect to. So you have 3D models, which are going to be your 3D Max, your FBXs, OBJs, that sort of thing. Um, you're also going to get your Civil 3D drawings, which I mentioned, and your IMX is your uh, resident InfoWorks file extension type, IMX file. You can also bring in your city GMLs and XMLs, as well as your LiDAR data, raster design images, uh, your Revit models, any GIS data you may have, as well as SQLite, and now you can even bring in SketchUp, so that's kind of nice as, as well. Uh, besides that, uh, there's lots of different places that have free access to data online. So many counties... DOTs, things like that, you can go right to their website or even just do a quick search, such and such city, GIS, and uh, it'll pull down a list of, of data that's available to you. You can also go to the USGS, Google, Turbo Warehouse, FEMA, things like that. So let's jump over into InfoWorks and let's take a look at uh, how you would go about developing a model. So when you first launch InfoWorks, this is the front end you're going to get. And so it's going to show you previews of any of the previous models that you've been working with. And this is currently showing me uh, ones that are available on my system as well as the ones that are available through my local group uh, through a cloud-based service. So you can manage those right up here on top. 
You can generate new models, which will allow you to connect to and bring in all of your own data. You can search for any files you like. And as I mentioned before, Model Builder is now available, which is a really nice feature. Basically, with Model Builder, all you really do is click on it, let it lo uh, load up in the window. While that's loading up, let me talk about these side options over here. Oh, there it is. So uh, I'll come back to the side options. So you can navigate anywhere in the U.S. and as well as the contiguous Canada and Alaska, anywhere you want to go. You can also type in a city or address, whatever you have available to you. And once you find the area you're looking for, you can just give it a name and hit create model. And then uh, it'll start processing on the cloud system and it'll actually email you when, when the model's done. And you'll get a quick email saying, hey, your model's ready to go. You close this up and you'll see the model sitting up here. And you'll notice there's different features in here, and one of them will be uh, download the model. This one, for example, download the model. And then you'll be able to go, and that'll give you the jump off point for all of the data you're about to create. Besides that, we've got a lot of additional add ons depending upon your login type and the subscription you have. You'll have access to various features. So you can see I've got uh, my, rodent my rodent design. Uh, bridge modeling, drainage, as well as some of the uh, technology previews for things like uh, corridor optimization, uh, land areas, traffic simulation, things like that. So I'm going to jump right into my webinar model, and this is one I created just from the model builder, just as I described. And for those of you keeping score, uh, we're going to be working in Seattle, Washington today. So it's just an area I picked out. So we'll take a look around, and this is exactly what they gave me from the Model Builder. Kind of gave me my start point. So you can see I did get all the terrain. I got the imagery, GIS roadways, as well in, as building data. So it gives me that start from where I want to continue my design from. Okay. And sometimes you might need to do a little bit of uh, adjusting, depending upon the data that you've received. Sometimes it's very detailed, sometimes it's not as. But uh, it's very easy to make adjustments in here, and as well as add your own information. So typically, this is where I would start, and then I would go and grab whatever data I've received from some of those GIS sites that I might have mentioned to you. And then I would add that information as well. So to do that, I would just go up, and open up my data sources and this shows me all of the data that was developed through the model the model builder and then I can go up and choose the different type of data that I would like to add on and I configure that and then it would add that into the model as well so besides that uh, everything works pretty seamlessly with a drag and drop functionality which is nice so if for some reason you found that uh, a road came in with a wrong type and uh, maybe it was the wrong configuration you can just open up the style palette and then go and find roads which is uh, why am I not seeing roads there it is all right so for whatever road type you're going for, you can simply drag and drop any type of style onto any other style to get that look you're going for. So it's also really nice to be able to analyze different design concepts, different themes, different ideas, and understand what the impacts are going to be by utilizing those. Okay. <clears throat> So this is kind of what you would consider your master model. And uh, from here, you can see everything's been created as, as master. You can then create what we call proposals. And so the proposals will allow you to come in and add your own proposed design content. And you can create as many as you like in case you want to come up with a few different design themes. Um, 
pretty simple and easy to do that. So I'm going to grab another proposal because you typically don't want to go work on your master. That's kind of the existing conditions. So I'll grab a design one. And for the design one, it's basically the same thing. I just added a quick little uh, coverage area, just drew a little bit of grass and started off with a simple roadway. So from here, it's, it's pretty simple and easy to go in and choose to start adding your own features. Uh, you can use the standard roads that come with the product as well as the uh, design roads that come with the, the road add-on module. So from here, if I wanted to create a design road, for example, I would just pick the type of road I want to create, and based upon the type of road you choose, it's going to look at certain standard files and apply speed limits and things like that. So I'll just do a local road and just scribble something on here. I'll just connect to that road there, maybe over there, and then uh, double click to connect right there. So you can see, pretty simple and easy, that roadway came right in. And again, I could grab the different style types and start dragging and dropping on those. So I laid that out horizontally. And uh, what I can also do is by looking at the geometry, I can also alter this vertically. So I can just say I want to uh, add a PI, PVI. And so that one gets inserted there, right where I selected. I can pick my vertical curve size. Maybe I want a 150-foot uh, vertical. Then I can take that design, raise and lower, and make all the changes I want. And if I really want to start understanding what's going on with this design, <clears throat> I could uh, bring up the profile. And it's going to show me the profile information, and I can adjust it here as well. So any changes I make are going to occur on my model. It's going to give me live data, station, elevation, as well as rate of grades. And I can choose to continue to uh, modify this kind of as I see fit. So let's go back and uh, take a look at this intersection. So this intersection you saw was pretty automated. It came right in on its own and it created the pavement markings and stopped the pavements and such. And you can see by when I hover on it, it does show that it's its own entity. And so when I select that, I do get the uh, heads up display which is going to show me that it's currently being designed for standard passenger vehicles. Now, if I want to further enhance this, uh, based upon uh, standard templates, I can choose different vehicle types, and you can see how it will regenerate to accommodate the turning radius of the various vehicles that uh, I might decide uh, need to access this area. So that's a nice little feature they've added. So now you can really control those a lot better. And you can see how the pavement markings, the medians, and everything all update on the fly uh, as those changes occur. So that's kind of nice. So we could continue to uh, draw on this by adding additional roads and features and things. Maybe I wanted an additional road. Maybe something that uh, connected down here, over to here, and then ties in. A double click will get you out of the tool. As you can see, anytime you connect to a road, it automatically creates intersections. Oh, looks like I missed this one. 
Well, it's a great opportunity to demonstrate how easy these things are to adjust. So I can just grab it, click, snap it on there, and notice how it will automatically generate that uh, intersection for me. I can continue to alter this horizontally, and again, I can do it vertically as well. So go in and start adding that information in there. So next I want to take a quick look at analyzing some of the uh, movements, the ability to use vehicle tracking and uh, access some of those features to make sure that that design that we just scribbled in actually works in a real world scenario. So vehicle tracking is an, it's an overlay tool that uh, it connects to several different products that you may have, Autodesk, uh, AutoCAD, Civil 3D, uh, Map 3D, so on and so forth. So it allows you to accurately predict uh, vehicle turning radius information and even optimize your geometry as well as uh, different types of analysis and reports. So it does install onto, again, uh, most of your common products. You'll also have the ability to install it in your AutoCAD architecture, uh, utility design, uh, things like that. So there's a few different things that the product will do. Uh, it, again, it does uh, accurately analyze vehicle movements horizontally and allows you to generate reports and uh, turning diagrams based upon that information. It does come preloaded with almost 500 different vehicles, and you do have the ability to create your own vehicles in the event that uh, the object you're trying to analyze isn't already preloaded in the software. So you have different uh, abilities to edit this data for the vehicles as well as generate the uh, reporting information. You can also do vertical analysis. So not only can you make sure that the top of the truck isn't going to hit the bridge, but you can also do it uh, underneath the vehicle. So what this will do is it'll make sure that the car can drive comfortably without bottoming out and overhangs hitting the ground and things like that It'll allow you to uh, adjust your profile design if you need to do so. It also has tools for generating parking lots uh, layout information as well as roundabouts. One of the nice tools about uh, and features that comes with the roundabout is if you've ever done roundabouts in Civil 3D you know that uh, it it has a roundabout tool and it does it in 2D, but in order to make it 3D, uh, you have to go through a f quite a few extra steps to generate the assemblies, the corridors, and targeting, things like that, where this will actually generate all of the alignments, offsets, profiles, corridors, and everything else. So that's really nice. And it's dynamic, so if you decide to move the roundabout, move any of the lanes, uh, adjust the angles on them, everything updates. It also does pavement markings and signage, so that's kind of nice also. So let's go take a look at that real quick. So when you bring your InfoWorks model into Civil 3D, you're going to get something that kind of starts off like this. And so you can see that model came straight through. I got my terrain, I got my alignments, and uh, offset alignments. All the profiles came in as well. So if you look under surfaces, alignments, offsets, you know, they all came in, and also notice, too, that any street that had GIS information, like street names, came in named with the, the proper street names. So you can actually go over and uh, find an existing road, uh, maybe this one down here, and it'll actually give you the real, real street names. That's kind of nice. So what you would typically do... Um, Next is use some of these Civil 3D tools as well as some of the vehicle tracking tools to uh, further enhance the model so that you can uh, run your analysis on that. And in an effort to save a little bit of time, I went ahead and did that. I also turned off the topo. So this is basically the simple roundabout uh, that we have as well as uh, the... Uh, initial information for the legs that are being brought in. So I got three different legs on here and your vehicle tracking gets brought in as an extra vehicle tab up on your ribbon. 
So it's pretty much broken down into, again, a few different modules. So you have the sweat path analysis module, which will allow you to do your horizontal, uh, vertical uh, analysis types. You can do your parking lot layout, your roundabouts, and then your uh, final review and animations. So if you come into your vehicle libraries, again, you'll see it comes with a pretty extensive list of vehicles uh, from all over the world. And these ones here that are in here, uh, you, you can't edit these because you know, we, they want to hold the values you know, as per what they're supposed to be for that uh, location. But you can copy any of these you want and then edit those. Or you can create them uh, straight on your own. So you have all the different abilities to make those changes and pick the vehicles that are going to work best for you. So typically when you're working with the uh, horizontal layout analysis, you're going to have the uh, auto drive arc, which will allow you to manually go ahead and create different methods for laying out your uh, vehicle. You have the manual drive. Uh, honestly, it's kind of like a little video game. It allows you to use the controls on your mouse and keyboard arrows to uh, drive the car around. Uh, the vertical clearance as well as the guided drive. The guided drive is more of if you have a polyline and you just want to connect the vehicle to that polyline and have it just run with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the auto drive arc and it's going to verify the, through the library which vehicle I plan on using. And so the last vehicle I used happens to have been a motorhome. So I'll just go ahead and I'll use that. So I'll say proceed. And you can see I get a little motorhome connect to my cursor. And you'll notice that it recognizes the alignments and the lanes, and it automatically tries to snap itself right inside there. So I can just click, and it places the vehicle, and now I have the auto drive dialog box where I can pick any lines or polylines and say, this is where I'm turning into, and it'll do its best to hold on to that. I can... Uh, manually freely make these curves based upon the curve standards of this vehicle and its turning abilities. If I'm at a stopped position, I have the ability to turn on a spot, which will give me a much greater uh, turning ability. So I can just move myself along here now, right inside there, and just place the vehicle wherever I think it's going to drive best or wherever I want to analyze it at. And it looks like it does, doesn't like that end. So one of the nice things about this is uh, if you back up, you'll see a little red X there. That'll allow you to pull out the next one. Basically, it's just telling me that uh, based upon the point I just clicked, I couldn't I overdrove and I wouldn't be able to make that turn back to get back in there. So it's nice that it can do that. So didn't like that one either. Yeah, we'll just let it auto drive itself right through there. That'll work. And then a right click will get me out of it. So it leaves that path there, and you can see the vehicles there. It puts in all of my grip points. And when I select this, I have the ability to go in and make changes to the turning points. And notice if I go beyond where it can turn, I lose my outline. I just get a little red line. just lets me know that uh, I can't go beyond there. And then if I hit the little plus, it'll allow me to insert an additional point. So that looks pretty good. And so now if I want to run a quick animation on that, yeah, let me back out so we can see a little better. So I'll run a quick animation on that. So I'm just going to say play. It's going a little bit slow, so I'm going to speed that guy up a little bit. And I'm sure my screen is a little small to see through the webinar, but uh, you can see the vehicle working its way through there. <coughs> and it's demonstrating how uh, that vehicle will be able to maneuver through that. And then if I have to generate any type of uh, 
exhibits or anything to convey this ability, uh, I can come in and I can use the place outline option. Pick this. And I can go ahead and place a vehicle anywhere that may be of interest to help demonstrate a key point. All right. So uh, pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, it's nice that you can make those types of changes. And also to demonstrate the vertical option, um, this one was kind of kind of simple and kind of flat since we were on that area. So what I did was I ran a quick profile of this one, which had a little more character to it. Uh, so over here, I'm going to go ahead and do a vertical clearance check. I'll, I'll use that same motorhome. So I'll say use that. And then I'll just pick my profile. And it's saying that uh, I didn't uh, change any of the default values. Do I want to continue? Yeah, it's fine. And being that I got a vehicle outline all the way to the end, that means my design complies. Uh, if it didn't, uh, it would actually stop wherever the big buckle or interference was going to be. So if I needed to demonstrate this again as well, I could place vehicles and I could demonstrate how this vehicle might perform through this irregular low point. So we can see and maybe generate a plot for that. All right. So now let's look at adding some detail to the model. Once we're happy with it and we've checked our curves and everything works out good, uh, again, any changes you make in Civil 3D will automatically update in InfraWorks and vice versa, so that's kind of nice. So once you get the, your design and it's pretty sound and everything looks good, uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to add detail. So you're going to want to come in, you're going to want to uh, add things like uh, trees and cars and people and uh, street lights and stop signs, things like that. There's also a few new features that are kind of nice, uh, so I want to show you a few of those. So we do have new road zones, which will allow you to give you different look of your roads, different road sections in different parts of your roads without actually having to break the roads into pieces. So that's kind of nice. We also have a lot more control over the roadside grading and uh, can lay out some coverage areas as well as land coverage areas. And I, I showed you the intersections a little bit already. So let's go in and take a look at that. So as I said before, this is a typically what you call a proposal. I've, I've moved into a design phase and I've done one that's a little more complete now and uh, we'll take a look at that one in just a moment. But for example, let's take a look at uh, what if we wanted to alter some of the road sections here. So if I select this road, I can come in and I can say I want to alter the style of this road and maybe I want to add a new style. I can pick whatever road section I want. Maybe there's an area that we need to neck down. So I'm going to say something like that. And I can just pick a point and pick a point. And you can see without having to split that road or create separate geometry or anything, uh, it was pretty simple and easy to have one continuous object with a new styled section in it. So that's kind of a nice little feature. Let's continue looking at some of the other options we can do. So let's take a look at uh, you can control the lanes forward, lane backward. So that's your lane backwards. There's your lane forward. See how it highlights each one of them? So Maybe um, I want to add a zone for the for the for a certain lane. So I'll add another one here. And notice that it goes to a default of one lane. And now right here I might say uh, I want three lanes. Maybe I'm going to create a little bus turnout or something. And I can quickly and easily start configuring that design like that. With, again, without having to split it and break it and transition and everything. Pretty nice and easy. And then finally, let's take a look at 
grading. So your roadside grading, now you can see by default it's using a fixed width of 33 feet. So let's change that. We'll go to a fixed slope. And this is using a 3 to 1 slope. So if I wanted, I could go maybe to a 1.5 or 2 to 1. to get you a much more realistic grading scenario, which is probably what they might do, a three to one or a four to one. So you can really control what the grading is happening, uh, what it's doing along your design as you're moving forward. Okay. Uh, you saw me do uh, coverage areas, so those are pretty quick and easy to do. Uh, anytime you wanna go into your design elements, you just go ahead and say create conceptual design and you can create any coverage you like from any land type you want and it's pretty easy to just add that planned area just so we can kind of define our design information and one of the nice things that I like now is we have these new land areas so if I wanted to uh, choose a land area maybe this is going to be the project site location and I use the same material, so it's kind of grassy. That's okay. But uh, what I can do with that, uh, let me go ahead and change one out so it's not identical. So I'll grab a dirt one. There we go. All right. So now I have the ability to go in, make changes, and notice that as soon as I placed that, it automatically flattened my pad. So even though the earth might not have been completely flat there, it automatically makes that adjustment. And you can make those changes after the fact if you like. Um, by simply selecting them and adjusting them. So if I wanted to grab this, lift it up in the air, you can kind of see, probably a little hard to see through the web browser, that uh, it does automatic grading and it automatically flattens the pad out. But one of the nice things you can do now too is the new grading elements. So if I wanted to come down and add some grading, I could pick a grading type, maybe a three to one grass, and just apply it to that. And you'll see how it will automatically grade that at a 3 to 1 and generate these slopes for me. And it's pretty simple and easy to go in and adjust the slope types and whatever type of grading you want to go with to get the look you're going for. So now if you really want to analyze the impacts of your design, you can do that on the fly. And as you move these objects around, uh, the grading is going to update and uh, you'll be able to get real-time feedback on your plan design without having to go and take it over back into Civil 3D for testing and that sort of thing. So besides that, uh, it's pretty simple to add anything else you want. Maybe I want to add uh, some trees. I can just pick my favorite tree. And you can add a single, you can add rows, you can add groups. to put in there however many trees you want. Adjust the density of however many you like. Adjust the heights of the trees. They'll dynamically update. So, as you can see, it's pretty quick to be able to add and customize this information very easily. So that's really nice. And then finally, let's look at visualization because I am running out of time. I always talk way too much. So visualization, uh, we do have options for uh, proposal analysis. So elevational range analysis, design speed analysis, basically any type of analysis you would like to run, you can do that. Um, light, wind, uh, different things like that. You have the ability to utilize the storyboard tool to generate animations as you walk through your design models. Uh, you can export those models uh, out to AVI's uh, 
J, uh, uh, MPEGs, excuse me, and WMV files, uh, standard movie, Windows movie files. Uh, you can add captions. Uh, you can do HD uh, rendered images as well, stills for PowerPoints and you know, uh, marketing, things like that. So let's take a look at that. All right, so I'm going to go to a model that's a little bit more complete. And you'll notice when I do, all of those design elements I just created uh, have been removed because those were resident in the previous design concepts. So that's how you can come up with several different looks and design elements. So here is your proposed model. And uh, now we can utilize some of the presentation tools. And maybe, for example, the sun and sky options. So we can take a look at that. And this is great for sun studies. So if we want to take a look, you can see I have a Revit building in there. And so we can use the date and time to adjust sun studies so we can understand the impacts throughout the day, throughout the year. And it'll use your real world coordinates to identify that. You can create renders of different types. So pretty nice and easy to be able to get a high resolution render uh, from your model. Again, to be utilized for marketing, things like that. Give that just one second to process. Again, you can see how you can adjust things like overcast, uh, brightness, and it's just going to continuously keep rendering. It's never going to stop. And the longer you let it run, the more uh, quality resolution it's going to get. It's just going to keep rendering over and over and over again so you get the look you're going for. When you're happy with it, you can just say stop, and then you can choose to save that out. And that will give you a nice image rendering. So we also have the storyboard creator, which will allow you to very simply uh, zoom in to any point you like and then just take a shot just by hitting a button up here. And it will add that point to, the, to your timeline. And then you can move to another point somewhere else and then do the same thing. And it will create an animation that transitions from the first view to the next view to the next view until you've totally conveyed the look you're going for. You can put in captions, you can put in captions throughout um, the entire animation so that uh, as it's going through your model, you have the ability to uh, tell the story of what people are looking at as they move around. And you can, again, output that to different video files and uh, uh, save it to different stills as well. So you can play it in here um, if you want your full screen back. We also have just the uh, storyboard player that you can launch in, as a floating browser. And then this will allow you to uh, play your animations for clients, meetings. And these can also be published to your uh, mobile and your web uh, interface. So if you're accessing it through the internet, uh, maybe at a client site, uh, or you're sending a file, a link to somebody else so they can see what your design concept is, then uh, they can access these as well. You don't have to create FTP sites and mail links or update files, anything like that. So it gives you the ability to really look at your model, see what the final design intent is going to be, understand things like views, uh, what are you going to see as you're, as you're kind of navigating the model after the construction's been done? Because you're looking at real-world data. This is the real terrain out there, as well as the real profiles you've designed on your alignments. And uh, this type of uh, technology is really going to set you apart from your competitors because where other people might be just proposing on a project with... Uh, uh, a stack of papers and a price attached to it, 
you're actually going to be conveying very quickly from real world data what the design is going to be, what the design intent is going to be, and kind of set yourself apart from the rest of, of the group. It'll really get the wow factor going for them. All right. Again, you also have the ability now to utilize uh, the web and mobile. So if you're in the field, uh, you can, you, if you have a tablet, you can pull up these models. You can actually use the augmented reality in the tablets, which will interactively place you in the model when you're out in the field. So that's kind of nice. It'll allow you to show you uh, uh, the, so the software to show you where you're at, which direction you're looking, and what you'd be seeing as you stand within the model. So that's nice as well. So I'm, I'm sure I spent a whole lot of time. I only left five minutes for Megan, and I apologize for that. But uh, um, just real quickly, so we did a quick product overview. Uh, we looked at how to develop your model and analyze uh, the vehicle movements at, through using the vehicle tracking software in Civil 3D. We also looked at adding different detail types and then finally creating uh, visualizations.